MSc Diploma in Fellowship after BDS is one of the options that all young dentists and dental interns look into. So we get a lot of questions about it. We have decided to come up with a video on the frequently asked questions related to MSc Fellowship and Diploma after BDS. If you're interested, stay tuned. Hi, I'm Dr. Satish Kumar and this is Kaizen Dental. Our aim here is to help dentists succeed. So, before we begin, the shout outs for today. If you like photography, I fell upon an amazing Instagram page by Dr. Krishna. There are really good photos out there. Do check it out. If you like Hindi poetry, there is a page called Muktasar Lines by Roshni. She is a dental student currently. You should check that page as well. So let's dive straight in to today's video content. The first question we are frequently asked is, what is the difference between fellowship, diploma and MSc? In the olden times, fellowship was given to an intern or a resident who has passed out so that they can work for more duration of time and improve their clinical skills. Previously, it used to be paid or voluntary. That is, the fellow would get paid by the university or college. However, in today's times, you have to pay a college or a university to do a fellowship out there, especially in India. The difference between fellowship and diploma is, fellowship is supposed to be more clinically oriented. That is, some amount of theory would be taught, but you are spending more time treating patients. On the other hand, diploma is supposed to be theoretically oriented, where they teach you basics of the course. But in today's time, the lines are blurred between diploma and fellowship. Sometimes you will find a diploma in which there is more patient hands-on, whereas you will find a fellowship which is theoretically oriented. So my suggestion, before getting into it, try and understand the course content, what they are going to teach you, how many patients you will get to work on. Then comes MSc. Compared to Diploma and Fellowship, which are certificate programs, MSc is Masters in Science. It is a Masters program. That is, you will get a postgraduate degree at the end of it. In the other two, you will only get a certificate. The next question we are frequently asked is, whether the course I do should be DCI approved or not? The answer to it is, yes, if it is DCI approved, well and good. But if the course content of a DCI approved course is not really great, then I would advise you to do a course which may not be DCI approved, but you get to learn a lot. The reason is, as a BDS, you are already qualified to do most of the procedures yourself. You do not need an additional certification. For example, as a BDS, you can do root canal treatments. You don't have to be an endodontist. You can do extractions. You don't have to be an oral surgeon. You can do implants. You do not have to have a postgraduate degree for it. So, do a course in which you get to learn more. The follow-up question to this is, if I do a course which is not DCI approved, can I put it on my board and on my letterhead? Currently, the Dental Council of India is not very strict about imposing any rule. So people usually do it. But you can always put the certificate in your waiting area, inform your patients and also put it in your website. You are allowed to do that for any continuing dental education program you attend. The next question is, should I do it in India or should I do it abroad? 20 or 30 years ago, 
if you wanted to do something advanced in dentistry you neither had the mentors in india neither the material so a lot of the old practitioners needed to fly abroad learn the tricks of the trade and at times even get the equipment and material they required for applying it along with themselves but now times have changed you have the best mentors and clinicians available in india itself all the top notch companies are selling their products here so most of the times for all courses you will find a really good mentor in india itself so you need not go abroad so there are only three situations in which you might want to think about going abroad and doing a course situation number 1 the technique you're doing or planning to learn is not taught by anyone in india right now situation number 2 there are certain masters program which acts as a shortcut into getting into the education or the clinical field abroad so you go do the masters program and then get a license to practice it there the third situation is very rare that is if you've done bds and you're planning to put your clinic in one of the elite areas of india and your patients are frequent flyers you want to prove to them that your clinical skill level is above the rest so you do go abroad to a course to try and impress upon your patients that so this does not happen frequently now for example in my practice the patients are only concerned about the quality of service i give them they do not look into whether i have done any course in india or abroad there might be certain pockets in the country where you get these kinds of clients so if you plan to practice there you can think about doing a course abroad but always look at the cost to benefit ratio the amount of money you're spending to go and do it abroad you should be able to regain that over a period of time before we move on to the next two questions if you are liking our video please do not forget to hit the like button below and i'm sure you have already subscribed to our channel because we produce content here which helps to grow your career after bds the fourth question which we have been asked often is which subject or topic should i do it in the answer always is consider these two points point number 1 what topic or treatments you would enjoy doing second is what treatment plans you can immediately apply the reason being if you study something and you apply it maybe after a year or two years you tend to forget more than 50% of it plus your confidence level is extremely low when you're trying it out now imagine you join a dental clinic what kind of patients or treatments will the doctor give you he will give you basic root canal treatments composites will he give you a patient in which you need to do a botox treatment or a lip filler obviously not on the other hand imagine you set up a new practice what kind of patients will first walk into your clinic those who want basic dental treatments no one would usually trust you directly with their extra oral face until they are confident about it so what you should do is you need to categorize the various course options into three categories first is the basics that is restorative and aesthetic dentistry second is the intermediate that is laser dentistry and implant dentistry and third is advanced which includes orofacial pain as well as cosmetology now depending upon how much knowledge you already have and the type of patients you can attract you should select the fellowship program so if you are in your initial phase and 
you will easily get patients for restorative and aesthetic dentistry then you should try and do a fellowship on that why did i put implants and lasers in intermediate the reason being certain areas when you set up your practice in you will initially itself get patients for implant treatments and laser dentistry so if you're planning to set up a practice in such an area you can do it initially itself but there's one follow up question i get but i want to do cosmetology i really like that field and i'm attracted towards it what should i do my advice is have patience you do not have to do fellowship soon as you pass out once you master the basics maybe it'll take a year or two maximum 3 years and you're sure that the patients trust you with greater treatment plans then you can go into a cosmetology fellowship or diploma or an msc program and then come and apply it but you do not want to learn something and not apply it then comes question number 5 how do i select the ideal course we have already created a complete video explaining the stages or steps what you need to consider while selecting your next dental course do check it out it includes points like how to find the ideal mentor how to ask people around how to compare the costs and then take a decision i'm dr satish kumar this is kaizen dental our aim here is to help dentist succeed